Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about how to use Filmic Pro to get the most cinematic looking images out of your smartphone. Firstly, let's talk about what is Filmic Pro. Filmic Pro is an app available for your cell phone that allows you to access some of the features you generally only see on DSLRs or standalone cameras. The problem with smartphones are exactly that. They're always trying to be smart. They're always trying to make best guesses about how to make the best images. Because the phone doesn't know about the environment it's in, these choices or these guesses can often be very unreliable. As a filmmaker, you don't want to give away the autonomy or control of the shot and Filmic Pro allows you to lock in shutter speed, ISO and to take full manual control over the focus so that you can dictate what the final image should actually look like. First we're going to look at Filmic Pro's main menu, then we're going to have a look at how you should set up your project settings. Then we're going to look at how to set up exposure and focus for every shot. And lastly we're going to look at the dynamic assist tools that Filmic Pro offers. Tap the gear icon and that will open the main menu. First, you should select your aspect ratio and resolution. At the top, you'll see a row of popular aspect ratios for you to select from. Most smartphone camera sensors are designed around 16 by 9 and that selection will record the entire image that you see on the screen. Depending on your production, you might need to shoot for another aspect ratio. Making a selection will give you a frame guide. Turning off crop source to overlay will still give you frame lines but will record the entire image sensor so you can make adjustments in post. Next, select your resolution. Options available here is dependent on the hardware capabilities of your phone. From the iPhone 6 and up, you're able to shoot at 4K. My advice here would be to shoot at the highest resolution possible. This means you capture the most amount of detail and can always downsample in post. Shooting in a lower resolution does open up more frame rate options for if you want to shoot in slow motion. In Filmic Pro you have the ability to set your bitrate to 100 megabits a second which is quite a big deal. It does consume more storage space but gives you a lot more latitude in post production for color grading and so on. I recommend to always shoot with Filmic Extreme unless space is a serious issue. In that case resolution can be lowered and bitrate can be taken down to standard or economy. Tapping on frame rates opens up the capture and playback settings. Here you will see the frame rate options that are available for your device. 24 for the film look, 25 for PAL, and 30 for NTSC regions. The frame rate options that are grayed out can be accessed by lowering your resolution. Next you can configure the audio settings for your project. At the top you can select any of the built-in microphones. I would suggest that if possible you select the one that says back which is the microphone pointing in the direction of the camera. If you are using an external recorder you can select video only to record only video from the phone. Now select from the lossless recording formats like AAC or PCM. If you see the option for AIFF just be careful because it's not supported by Adobe software. 48kHz is industry standard and I would leave it there. The device menu allows you to set device settings like saving to camera roll, enabling uh, remote control, orientation lock, snap focus, and other preferences that are entirely up to you. Next is presets. You can save your current settings as a preset so you can load them whenever you want to use them again. This includes the things we've just set up like your preferred resolution, frame rate, and audio. CMS is Filmic Pro's built-in content management system. If you're working on a longer project, I highly recommend making use of it. You can enable a time code, you can name the production, you can also name scenes and takes. Some of the information you would traditionally write on the clapperboard can go into the CMS section. This section is used to control the file naming properties in of your recordings. This helps you to customize the typical file naming structure of your phone for something that's a little bit more direct and clear for post-production and editing. The hardware section allows for third-party hardware support and this is where you would enable the extra features for your third-party gimbals or adapters. The sync section allows you to upload your saved presets so you can download it to any device running Filmic Pro with your account on it. The community tab provides you with links to Filmic Pro's website and social media accounts. Currently highlighted in red is a link to Filmic Pro's First Light which is their pro photography app. 
Next, you have an option to turn on or off the built-in stabilization. The choice here is really up to the needs of your production. Just a short warning is that the use of internal stabilization can cause artifacting in your images under certain conditions. Next, you can select what camera you want to use, like the front selfie camera, the back camera, or if your smartphone has any lens options, such as macro, tele, or wide. Tapping guide will enable grid lines for you to check and adjust your composition. Once your project setting has been configured, keep them consistent throughout the entirety of your shoot. Next, we're gonna look at how to control focus and exposure for your shots. For exposure and focus, Filmic Pro has three modes, the reticle mode, the hybrid mode, and the manual mode. To access the sliders, you can tap and hold one of the reticles, or you can slide in from the side. When the reticles are red, it means they've locked in the settings you've selected. When they're white, it means that they're in automatic mode, and the phone is determining either focus or exposure. One thing I found a bit tricky is if you make a selection in manual mode and then use the reticles, it doesn't keep the settings you've selected, and it might change the shutter speed or ISO. At least this was my experience and I found it quite frustrating at times. On a smartphone you can't change the aperture of the lens, but Filmic Pro allows you to lock the ISO and the shutter speed. To do that in manual mode, access the left hand slider. The top number is the ISO and the number below is the shutter speed. Move the slider up and down to adjust the ISO and then tap the number to lock it. Then do the same for shutter speed. For the most cinematic motion, lock it at 148th or 150th of a second. When the settings are locked, the numbers turn red. If you have the analytics feature enabled, it will display zebras to help you manage your exposure. Overexposure is indicated by red and underexposure is indicated by blue zebra stripes. Make sure your exposure is locked before we shoot a take. We do not want exposure to change mid-scene. With analytics enabled, Filmic Pro will give you a dynamic focus assist using peaking, with general focus indicated in blue and critical focus indicated by green lines around the sharpest parts of the image. Next, let's talk about how to set your white balance. To manually adjust your white balance, click on the three color wheels at the bottom left of the screen. When you enter for the first time, auto white balance should be enabled, indicated by the blue AWB if you have this enabled while shooting, it will adjust the white balance during your shots. It's best to select your white balance before you start shooting and then lock it, which is indicated by the AWB turning red. Filmic Pro also has a very cool feature called Auto Lock White Balance, which will keep the white balance on auto but will lock it when you start shooting. To enable this, make sure that the AWB is highlighted in orange. Below the color square, you'll see the traditional white balance presets for tungsten, daylight, overcast, and fluorescent lights. In the color square, you can adjust the color temperature and the tint together, or you can adjust them individually in the sliders. On certain models of phones and through an in-app purchase, you can get the cinematographer's kit that allows you different color profiles to shoot on. These color profiles will give you more latitude in post-production. This includes a log profile to help you get the maximum dynamic range out of your device. Be warned if you use the flat or log color profile, you are going to have to grade your footage afterwards in a program like DaVinci Resolve or in Premiere. Lastly, let's look at the dynamic assist or live analytics that Filmic Pro offers. To access this mode, click on the A at the bottom of the screen to turn it red. Then at the top, you'll see four options. The first option is Zebras that desaturates the image so you can better judge exposure. It indicates overexposure by red zebra stripes and underexposure by blue. If you adjust the exposure in this mode, it will give you a dynamic reading of the changes that you're making. The second option is the clipping overlay, and this will show you parts of the image that is being completely lost when no data will be recoverable in post. It uses red to indicate the data loss in overexposed areas, and it uses blue for the data loss in the underexposed areas. One of my favorite features of Filmic Pro is the false color option that helps you judge overall exposure. If you're used to reading false color, this is quite a simplified version. It uses green to signify correct exposure, red for overexposure, and blue for underexposure. This mode is very useful when you're shooting in challenging lighting conditions, and I suggest that you consult it to make sure that you're falling within the capabilities of your phone. 
The last option is focus peaking that will draw a green line around the sharpest parts of the image. This is very useful when you're pulling manual focus using the sliders on the right side of the screen. There's a lot more to learn about Filmic Pro, but if you take the time to master it, you can genuinely get beautiful images out of your smartphone. Just a quick tip, because you're shooting at 148th or 150th of a second, it can still be challenging to get correct exposure in daylight situations. I recommend using an ND filter and taping it over the front lens of your phone. This should block some of the light, helping you to keep your shutter speed down to where it needs to be and get as close to the correct exposure as you can. Filmic Pro's claim to fame is that it's been used in almost every high profile film project shown on a smartphone. I hope this video helped you so you can use it in your own production. Go out and get filming.